in I think 2020. We, go, we have Mr. Know You in the studio. In 2020, I'm like, hey, we have Mr. Feeling. Hey, we have Mr. Big. There's always a chance. That's how team. consistent hey. you become as a rapper. And that's yeah. like one thing rappers don't usually like. Rappers in Nigeria don't usually have that. And, and uh, you're Social right, shows. because I feel like, how do I say it? Afrobeat artists are usually more prolific. Yeah. I feel they create more music much faster. I don't know if it's because, you know, rappers, we sit there and we write and try and come up with all these kind of things. Maybe that's the reason, but you're right. I feel like we make less music than our, our Afrobeat counterparts. Do you think you've hacked how to make it? Great single as a rapper, or hit single, let me put it like that. Being a rapper, rapper making yeah, being a pop, rapper, pop heavy. I'm being like a single. rapper, because you know, you know that debate now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We won't get that lyrical, commercial. Like, do you feel like you've hacked that thing now? Like, okay. um, do you know? I am one of those few people that believe that there's not, there's really no hack. But at the same time, I do know there's one phrase that rappers put on. It's like it's a toxic phrase for rappers, <laughs> but they don't realize it. This dumb it down thing. Yeah. I've, I know where I've thrown it to because I don't buy into it anymore. It's not about, at least with my own ability, I don't see it as dumbing it down. I know when, because the art, rap artist, the artist part of rap artist means you give the song what it needs or what it is as in you, you need to express, express it. And you're going to do it in different ways. There's certain songs that do not require a super lyrical, dominant, heavy track. I mean, verse. It just doesn't. And if you do it, you're actually killing the song to prove what? To do, prove something for your own ego. <laughs> No, I mean, because I've now realized as an artist, there's something I want to express, and I'm not going to allow my ego stand in the way of doing that. So with feeling, feeling is probably the most karaoke verse I've ever written, but it works for the record, because I needed that record to be, um, the verse to be almost as sing-along as the hook. So I step right. out, all white, can't stain, right. what you want, rosé, champagne, and it works for performances, because I... I could see the performance as I was writing it. So like, I think that it's not necessary that there's a hack, but I, I am, I know I've controlled my ego you as, as a rapper. When you it, like when you finished and, and then... Before I even wrote my verse, I knew it was a hit because we heard the, 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 the beat and the hook. So when I heard the beat, you know, Buju wasn't there. That was with Andre, me and Andre and my, and Emmanuel, my personal manager, we heard the beat together and I already said, Andre, put that in my folder because I, I like this beat. Then when Buju dropped the hook on it, I was like, I didn't think it was a hit, hit, because I never raised my expectations like that. The last time I thought the song was a hit, it wasn't a hit, Which and that was Jaye. Right. I remember I said on the beginning of the record, I don't really know what a hit record is, but I know I like this vibe. But in my head, I was like, oh, this is a hit record. So I've stopped doing that to myself. I just make music that I enjoy and that I can be proud of, period. You and you're getting that um, crowd engagement from the way you wrote the hook because you said you could visualize the performance. So. See, look, when I'm performing, feeling I go, <clears throat> so I step out all white. I don't talk. You stop. <laughs> I don't talk. So that's how I know we did, we did what we needed to do. So it's like, okay, you go and put a super lyrically heavy verse, and then, then they're just waiting for you to get to the hook. Then did I do justice to the song? And I think that's the thing a lot of artists, rap artists, have to figure within themselves. That identity crisis is real, and I respect. I feel like if you want to be the, a great, you're going to go through it, especially here in Nigeria where rap has baggage. You're going to go through that, what kind of rapper should I be? Am I allowed to use melody? Am I allowed? Once you figure yourself out, which I have, you will know that you have a lot in your arsenal. Deploy it when you need it. That's it. Speaking of figuring yourself out, we just... Let's go back to like when you started. Mm. Like you used to like roll with them. Remember that you used to roll with them SDC. Oh yeah, yeah. Kind of Broke out from that. So what was that like? How did you learn how to rap? Let me just put it like that. Just um. Like so I started rapping before I met them. I was when when I was in uni, I kind of like picked up the skill. And I was in Yankee. I was in North Carolina, and I picked up the. Obviously, I grew up with rap. Like we all, a lot of us did, you know. But Who's like the greatest all time. <sighs> Hard to say, but I do know the guys that I kind of patterned my rap style around was uh, a group. There's a guy in a group called Little Brother. It's then based in North Carolina. Exactly. Fonte. <laughs> Fonte was somebody that was like, he, you can go hard and be really aggressive, but he was more about wit. Yeah. And, and then I come to Yeah, I, you know, and then uh, double entendres yeah. and flipping words in ways you didn't expect. So I was drawn to that. And that's why now you see I say no punchlines, just lifelines, because I have lyrics that you kind of think about and, and leave something with you. So, like, for me, once I picked up the ability to rap, and I came to Nige, 
I met STC through my through our mom's Don't worry, that's story. We've I, I, I yeah. think you're tired of that story. Uh, yes, I you am. Said it. Thank you. <laughs> I heard you say it. I heard I'm you say it. I'm so tired. Just give us the Republic. Yeah. Even last year. No, even last year. He knows. He knows. Don't go and stress my guy. Just give me the compartment. The Republic. So I pretty much, I pretty much attracted STC. Yeah. 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 Because only people that told me that were people who knew we were rapping and were friends in school. Imagine if people thought you might be whack. Maybe you thought this some rap. He would just not have picked up my phone again. I was telling you, no, actually, he thought I was whack. Because he was, I remember, I, I myself was irritated at Momsi saying, go and meet this guy. And he was irritated. Like, oh, God, here we go again. And then I was surprised with what he played me. He was, he was surprised with what I played him. And then he introduced me to Icon. He took me to Red Room Studios. And that's where I started to like record frequently. And the thing about moving back to Niger is that I feel like I started my journey to be an artist when I came back because you need stories to be an artist. Without stories, you're just rapping. You know, and for a long time, I was just a rapper. Even when you heard me on Koye, when you heard me on Marry Me, I knew I could rap. You know what I'm saying? People knew I could rap. They'll call me, drop a verse. I'll drop the verse and I'll move. But it's when I dropped maybe like Adore Her that I was like, I think I want to be, I want to be more. I know there's more inside me. There's things I want to say. I, I can take this to another level. SDC were in instrumental because I remember Tech saying, guy, people need to know that you're not the third member of SDC, that you are fire. You need to go out and start dropping your mm. own songs. Like, they actively pushed me to that. Most people in Nige, if they meet you and they think you're dope, they're going to first make you sign a contract. SDC, I always say I came into the game with brotherhood. And I feel like that's rare. Now, guys, they're signing you first. You know, so, and to a contract that might not make sense. So I think that my introduction to the game allowed me to be what I am now. Like, I'm, and also, one thing that's really critical is that they were rap rappers. Like rap rapper guys, you know <laughs> bars. Do you know what I'm saying? SCC bang bang, and they quickly noticed that I was a bit different. I would break off into off kilter melodies and cadences yeah. that were just unusual, and they felt people needed to see this like versatility on different sounds. You know, sorry, so that was sorry. cool. I, I'm going to be having lots of fanboy moments. So at that period, so everyone heard him. He sounded like he was as hard as them. And then here it comes on Faz's record, the Marry Me. No, Sh Chardonnay. Oh, Chardonnay music. So yeah, them. Um, my boss, uh, did I say the Chris? Or yeah, did chop. I say chop Chris or chop for food? Because this thinks everybody's yeah. on the island now to late sinks. So yeah. that um, this is not a question. Yeah, I just talk. <laughs> I talk. Uh, that verse, uh, ask her. that uh, verse was. It won't be really clear to me that this is guy that can do that thing. He yeah. can make the yeah. brilliant rap very accessible and make it sweet too. Mm. He doesn't have to be like pop or too hardcore. Because sometimes STC they get accused of being too mm. hard. Although mm -hmm. they do they. Solve that problem with, with palm wine, of course, yeah. of course, of course, and and it's so interesting you bring that because that's what I'm talking about about artistry is like taking elements of your life and putting it there. And because I've been in traffic, I've been in the, the traffic is deep and the verses are coming to me and I I know we're all living that experience. How far we Lagos on a Monday? Traffic is as bad as the news on the front page. So people, you like it one because you you like the rap artistry of it and the way the words are flowing, but you also like it because you because know the situation. Yes. And I've realized that a lot of rap, especially because a lot of us feel like in Nigeria that if it's not rap borrowed, uh, that sounds like Yankee, yeah. then it's not hip hop. Yeah, no. But people can't relate. And if people can't relate, then they don't listen. If they don't listen, then what are you, you're wasting your bars. So I realize now that relatability is a big part of my own music personally. I want people to know where I'm coming from. I want people to know what I'm talking about. And also, I'm not rapping indigenously with indigenous language. So I have that extra barrier of how can I make sure they understand what I'm saying yeah. and, and, and know that they are living that same life too. So I mean, like, I feel like that's, that's one of the reasons for the relevance now. So you yeah. can, uh, where Mia Cotton was on Adoha, Mm. Oh yeah. What, what happened to the collective? <sighs> the collective. That was, like, that was like icon, black pole. I think Goose. Timmy, Timmy, Timmy Dollface. Yeah. I will never Kim. forgive Nigerians for what we did. We, we did deserve Timmy Dollface. Yeah, yeah, at the just time. Came, I think Joe just like that. Uh, yeah, definitely. Some artists definitely. Just, it just so, happens like that for some There were like seven of them. Kid right? Connect was there. Connect. The STC boys were there. Icon was there. Insecac, the guitarist, Insecac, was there as the well. Guitar, yeah, yes. yeah, you know. So, I mean, like, uh, I'm sure I've missed. Fumbi was there too. Fumbi. So, I feel like. Um, the, you know, things happen when the, the environment is perfect for yeah. us. It's just the timing was right. A lot of us, I mean, not like what now, booked for shows, studio time, Icon is mixing this record, no time. You know, so then there was opportunity. Like the Soul Quarians that year, you know, yeah. there was opportunity to do it and we did it. Shout out to Chino KK as well. He's a big part of it. He wasn't making the music, but he was a big champion of it. So I feel like 
the time was perfect and we did something and we did another one. I think we did, did we do three? Did, I just think you did three or not. Dude, how can I not know? Like, I, 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 like, I love the that, yes. yeah, that first hit that's, was the that's one like, I, I want to talk about had, like, the, red thing, the red cover, the, red the broken red. record, and made the seat. I, I, I remember the shoots where they had you all. Oh my all god. With, yeah, space with pillars. Yeah. Like, we did that at Park. Such, we, yeah, I, I can yes, tell it was Park. Yeah, yeah Park. It was such a revolution. Yeah. Um, it's, you mentioned Adoha. Adoha was a beat that STC didn't want to use. And the reason why is because, like I said, I used to break off into these weird melodic yeah. raps, and they were Ghost was like, "No, techno, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not jumping on this." You know what I'm saying? So I heard it, and I was like, "I'm fully already laid down the hook." So I was like, "This is me, yeah, I can, yeah. like easily." So, yeah, girl, I'm loving yeah. you totally, baby. Openly yeah. from your head all the way to the floor. Like I like to find the little pockets of space yeah. and do my thing with it. So Adoha really showed me that your man, that and that was like an Afrobeats type record. So that was me oh. showing me that I, I, could, I could see that I can't do this thing on an artistic level. I can find my own identity, you know? So um, I'm, I'm really proud of that song because that's like the beginning of I want to be an artist. Started from that oh, song. That's a, that's a yeah. Moment, yeah. Yeah. Such a dope moment. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. Those guys, yeah. those guys, <laughs> fun boy. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, you don't have time. So I do like, I don't ask the Oscars people like, okay, hey, but obviously people like, maybe people are watching the show for the first time. And that yeah. meets with Don Jazzy. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I did that story. Jazzy. Um, how, how the Jazzy thing happened, you know, I, I, I one day even myself need to sit down and ask Jazzy, like, really, what's the moment? What I've been told was that he was listening to radio and he heard me. I think I, I had Koye one, I was playing Koye one, I was pushing Koye one at the time. And he heard that song and he was like, I like this guy. This, this guy can rap. But this guy sounded like a girl, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. That was where he left it. Then I think and some time passed. Deja and I were friends. You know, I met in Yankee a few times. So she, she moved back and she got signed to Maven and everything. I was congratulating her, great. But then I think through her, Jazzy was able to see me again. And, you know, remembered, I, I kind of like this guy and they saw me in her video. And then, you know, I got, I, I'm on radio once again and I'm pushing another song and I get back to back phone calls from DJ's Rodi, Solo, Solo Budu. And then I call back during the break and I'm like, guy, how far now? And he's like, um, Jazzy wants to sign you. That's, that's what he said. It's like, Jazzy wants to sign you. And I'm like, sorry, what? And everybody in the studio at the time, the radio studio, they, they had their own opinions. That's the thing. My signing to Maven was like mixed reactions with my fan base. Some people were like, finally, yeah, our guys, you, you know, yeah, one, some people were like, finally, yeah, he's going to see the, you know, yeah, they're going like, to see him, amplification. Yeah. Other people are like, they're going to make him, they're going to change the yeah. sound. So like, and I only think Jazzy himself didn't expect that. Like when they unveiled me, he got such a mixed reaction that he came into the studio and said, the song that we want to drop, <laughs> yeah, are you sure? let's go back to, let's make sure it's a rap song. Yeah. Because this guy's fan base is very specific, yeah. you know. And um, for me, it was also mixed. I didn't know how to feel. SEC were very encouraging. They're like, yo, guy, it's your time. Go do it. Go show it. How, show people how it can be done. You know, I was in mixed feelings because Jazzy is Jazzy. I'd elevated him. But I knew I made a style of music that I needed to come out. One of the first songs I played for Jazzy, because I told him I can't sign until he hears my, my music music. Yeah. So let's not let be, let, like, let me not be like I'm a fraud, like I'm lying to him about what I really am about. I played him Voices with Effia, yeah. and that's produced by Icon. And that's like a rap, hip hop record, you know, with things that I love, big vocals and musicality. And he was like, this is Grammy material. But you also have to know that you need to bring the audience close, then feed them your sound. That was his advice. So my, 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 my meeting with Jazzy, also um, one of the things that I didn't mention is that was also an email. He sent, I sent him an email and he responded. The last line was, I think we can heat up the industry together. We just didn't know it to take us like three years to do it. But no, the, good, yeah. no, just you finding yourself like experimenting. And he's was patient. I know there were times where he probably felt, I don't know what to do with this guy. And mm -hmm. I felt... Every producer on this label is geared, they're already in, ready for the market that, you know, everybody had this Afro pop sound. I was trying to find my way in the studio to find my sound. It was tough going, but because I never lost connection with like my guys, my, my, my people, I could step up. That's what changed everything for me, I believe in Maven is one, Maven was patient. Two, Maven had big goals of going global, and global being going global takes diversity of sound, and they wanted that. They signed myself and Johnny Drill. That's an indication, yeah. right? So I, but when I 
when I worked on Talk About Poe, which was largely away from Maven, and them loving the sound, that's where it clicked for both of us. Because it was like, okay, this guy, this is the kind of music he makes. His fans love it. We came up with this mantra, niche artistry, mainstream success. What that means is you can be you. Maven's, what, what the team was trying to tell me at Maven was, you can be you. Our job is to make sure everybody sees you and we can sell it. Trust us to sell who you are. So be you, but don't, don't, don't put your own self in a box with your own sound. And that's why you can see that I've tapped into things like Are You Down? I did Know You. I did all these songs where I'm, I am being an artist. I'm writing a record. It can be a pop record. It can be a whatever record. But because rapper actually doesn't just mean hip hop artist from America, pretend to be an Americano. It actually means writer. You got to be a writer. If you're not a writer, you, ain't, you can't rap, man. The best rappers are actually writers. And that's why M.I. was so successful because you think he came and gave you only gangster rap. He sang, baby, 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 I not say, I not say, lele, eh? That's because he's a writer and he knew what it took to like adapt to the market, you know? And I feel like I had to, see, I'm the kind of guy that I always felt like I'm the guy. And I was like, to, to be. you are the guy. I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy. I tell you. It is true. I'm trying to be humble now. No, no, you need to be humble. You know, I felt like, so to do that is like, I can't. I can't make the same mistakes others have made. And, and I don't believe what the Nigerian audience is telling me that rap is dead. I just don't. I feel like it, it can be applied to many different things in different ways. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because you already said rap in Nigeria has baggage. Yes. So, and why is it that? Every time rap is trending on Twitter, mm -hmm. it's because one thing has happened. It's never, it's never trending because, oh, this song is so great and yeah, everybody is yeah. flipping over the yeah, bars. It's yeah. always, oh, Recross came, the rappers are angry. Or... <laughs> So, yeah, first of all, I love that headline, like, Rick came, <laughs> rappers are angry. There was a time, back 2019 or so, that Vector MI beef mm. was the one time that the Nigerians were anticipating rap records dropping and then yeah. when it dropped, everybody ran to go and listen to it. Yeah. So, does it take, why does it take beef for, to, for us to go and listen? And, uh, which, which I think, so my real question is now is that, does that mean beef is good, important, is it important for the culture? I think beef is just as important as any PR stunt. Beef oftentimes is, is, is a PR move. You, know, you, want, you want to say something controversial so people can pay attention to you because you know you're dropping your single in two weeks. You know, so there's a lot of artists that will be controversial knowing that it's part of their rollout. I respect that and I don't knock that. You know, but at the same time, that's why I oftentimes don't respond. Because, I, bro, you're not paying me to be part of your PR. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So why do I, should I sit down, take the time to come and respond to your verse when you're just going to drop your single that has nothing to do with me two weeks later? Yeah. It's not, you know, so I think you're right. I, I don't want it to be that. Can we be more sophisticated than that? That it doesn't have to be a beef moment to make people listen to rap music. Like I wanted to see, because also what I find interesting is that maybe a hard rap verse drops. People don't recognize it as that. So I think a good example is, was it 20? When did Killing Them drop? Is that 2018? 2018, maybe December 2018. I personally feel like Zlatan dropped a very hard verse. Just his verse, just the cadence and the yeah, authority really he yeah, dropped. Yeah. And that is a rap verse. Yeah, anybody that knows, like, rap knows that's a rap verse. That's a rap verse. He's not a rapper, so he can't rap. He doesn't look like a rapper, so he can't rap. Yeah, he is a rapper, or, actually. But the person he comes out from, the messenger, actually, yeah. don't, like, get... Like so it, it gets so a lot of times great rap verses get lost in the kind of music that yeah. they're wrapped up in exactly. and you don't recognize it that that's a moment that's a moment where rap is driving a popular yeah. record yeah. and there's nothing wrong with the hook not being rap because that's look even in, um, in Yankee when you are listening to um, the great examples are people like the Ja Rules who have used big hooks to, to make yeah, strong yeah, rap big records big hooks a lot of times yeah. Dave's send me the location exactly. big hook so there's nothing wrong with a rapper pairing up with a vocalist that's going to take the record there. And I just feel like why I say baggage is it's more about perspective and narrative. They act like rap, strong rap moments are not based, don't have anything to do with rap. It's quickly rolled into Afro beats, which is okay. But don't say rap is dead because rap is actually still I very much alive and pushing records. Was, I used to be with that one guy that I used to be with. Because like, rap is dead. I'm like, don't say that. Like, say, say, say like, Joey. <laughs> because, but I don't think, you think Joey can. Yeah. Funny enough, I actually feel like Joey kind of sees, doesn't think that rap is dead. He feels like people should understand that it's occupy, it's, 
Yeah. Rap doesn't have to, o- yeah, it doesn't have to only be seen in the light of hip hop. Yeah, yeah. That and let me say, when I say hip hop, I'm specific to saying hip hop that we borrowed. Oh, yeah. I didn't even have a problem with Joey's takes on this issue. I didn't have a problem with Joey's takes on this issue. I never seen we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yeah. Let's, let's fast forward to Big Energy. Big like, energy. I feel like you do have the freestyle first, you know, like, you know what, let me drop this freestyle. But it seemed like the freestyle came out and people were like, oh, this is a dope song. And you're like, you know what, this is a dope song. Well, how, how did that happen? Um, that's a good question. I think you're probably the first person to ask me that question. Uh, I had the record, Big Energy. And I thought to, the, to myself, I was like, you know, I want this big energy thing is more than just a single to me. It's like, this is how I feel. The last 2021 was a great year. Moved into it, 2022, I'm on tour with Fire. You know, um, now I see the Headies nominations and all these kind of things, all this big energy is how I feel. So I was like, I want to drop this as a record. But I was like, but I need people to always understand I'm on one. I'm about what I say I am. I'm, I know I'm a lyricist. And I know the level at which I'm rapping is elite. I need to remind them of that. But yeah. two, to show them that there's multiple ways to present rap. That's just, to me, it was almost like a combination of this needs to happen also. It's a little bit of an experiment for yeah. me. So I took my own record before I dropped, sent it, to, it was produced by Killer Tunes, sent it to Sigag Lauren, who's a producer as well, told him, sample my song, but make it a hard rap verse and send it to me. And that's what happened. And I dropped the freestyle. So that's how big energy can exist like that. I can also exist as this fusion, rap, pop, single kind of thing. And they can still bang for whoever likes it. Because if I drop a rap, pop single, and, but I give a rap, rap verse for my rap heads, that is literally the assignment that me, I have taken upon myself. That's the job. I can't appeal to everybody with one song. Yeah. But like, I need them to also know that all sides day, I day for you. I dropped another song, Overdose. Yeah. Overdose day. Yeah. Overdose is rap and Afrobeat. So I need, I'm, there's a story I'm trying to tell people. There's a message I'm trying to send across that. But Nigerians are stubborn. So I have to put different types of rap <laughs> yeah, on different rap types of, you know, exactly. Once I put different types of rap on different types of song, how can you talk? How can you tell me it's not relevant? When Overdose now has a rap verse on it and it's one of the number one songs on radio. Do you know? But it's, it's, it's less about me being relevant, but the idea that rap doesn't, okay. is not an important tool still. And I feel like it's, that's, if you do that, you're eliminating or seg- so many types of yeah. artists no longer are valid. And that's what, what the leader of the revival is about, is telling them that, nah, bro, you did valid, and you can actually make an impact and you can get paid. Because a lot of times what they're really, what they're bottom line is what they're saying is that rappers can't, how can rappers exactly. make money in Nigeria? It's a lie. I can tell you for a fact that it's a lie. My manager can tell you for a fact that it's a lie. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we know. you know what I'm saying? And, and, and we see the glow. The magic is that, from this explanation, now, it sounds like you're, you're having fun making this music. This is your, it's not that you dumbed it down or you went commercial. This is stuff that you like to make, too. I'm so happy you said that. I'm so happy you said that because they feel like, okay, well, you had to switch up to make yes. it work. No, no. I, I, I'm enjoying it. And the thing is, the, I'm the kind of um, artist that I, if I'm in the studio, I, I, I'm part of my records. I'm, I know that a rap song, a great song doesn't need just one good verse. It needs a great bridge. It needs a great yes, melody. It needs a great hook. And I'm part of all those aspects. I'm no longer the rapper that, oh, I'm happy my verse is the best and I'm done. The work hasn't done, it's not done yet. The mix, the master, I'm, I'm a big part of every aspect of it. You know, so I'm, I feel like I've become more of a, a complete artist these what days. I, like I think you've, you, hacked, you've hacked it. Yeah. Wait, wait, first. Do you, do you know that, that you have an eye candy, sex icon thing going on? Apparently, <laughs> so, <laughs> I've so, 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 apparently, so I've been here. So this, shape, even on the, the last of us, the, the line with the last of us thing about mm-hmm. you, babe, when yeah. news drops that you had a girlfriend or something, mm-hmm. guess for Twitter one beat you. <laughs> It was a serious problem. You know, it's funny. It's funny because a tweet inspired that line. Because there's the one that said, uh, like, like, pardon his babe, laughing at all these tweets. And that's actually what inspired the line. I was like, you know, I'm laughing yeah, with my babe playing Last of Us again. Because at the end of the day, you know, I mean, it's funny, like, do I not deserve, like, love and companionship to me? <laughs> like, what Did is you that? I think the looks was going to... I'm not saying that the looks had contributed to Kai, but the looks has... Contributed to the artistry, the musician. Yeah, the, yeah that's, I, I, the I, I, artist should look good. I, I will tell you something. It's funny because I remember when I, you know, this is one of my early managers. She was like, you know, we need to capitalize on this, and I was like, no, never. 
I'm never going to be that guy that will. <laughs> but now I've, I've understood, seeing even guys that I like, like, you know, one of my, especially when it comes to like fashion, I really look up to people like ASAP Rocky. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there is more to the music. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot of us who really love what we, like I, I came in really just, music made me happy, writing made me happy. You only focus on that. But now as I understand the business more, as I understand what branding means and marketing means, I understand that tap into the things that are also you. So yeah, I've given into that as well and understood that, okay, the image is also important. The style is also important. And so I can express myself through those things as well. And, you, you are know, only your fine boy. <laughs> basic, and you know, the funniest thing is that, you know, after know you, I realize, oh, there's, there's really a female fan base and they actually are listening to my verses because they come up to me like, I don't normally like rap, but your music, I like it. Yeah, I'm that's, like, okay. that's, that's, that's super that's the big, This is the bigger compliment. That's a big compliment. I like that. Man's asked, do you get this form of like self, like how should I put it? Like self, I like mean, people like, for example, for example, your verse on Providence, mm. that's nominated, I can see it. Bar heavy verse. Mm. Do you well, like when you get nominated for those kind of things? You, are you like, oh shit? People still know that I can do this thing. It's to me. I don't know why I should I feel like I shouldn't be surprised because there are people who like to listen to music and everything and listen to all sorts of music and are appreciative of it. But it always comes off like validation to me that it's like this thing is not being overlooked. And because I, there's being good, but I feel like when you, especially with being a rap artist when you hit a certain level of elite rapping, I feel like you lose engagement somehow because nobody's willing to pay that extra attention to, maybe it, because in the, it's just our music space rewards simpler things. And that's not yeah, 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 bad. Yeah, yeah. Simple is not, simple doesn't mean that bad. Good, yeah. No, it just means that's the that's style. What want to to. Yes, exactly. That's like a great artist knows that, oh, this is what these people want. Let me, give, let me give them what they want. And, like, because I'm making like, music yeah, and I love exactly. to make music. And also, it doesn't just apply in our industry. That's worldwide. worldwide, worldwide yeah. That's actually worldwide. worldwide. And I also realize that too. I remember when, and I don't want to be that guy. I remember those rap, the rap artists in Yankee when they were vexing over trap. Trap has come. Trap artists can't rap. They're mumble rappers and everything like that. Now, drill has come. I would rather just move with the times. Which one be drill? Drill day now. He's lost in the. Yeah, he's lost in the nineties. I, yeah. I live in the past. So <laughs> drill, drill now, drill and now drill is probably the most global hip hop sound, yeah, most cool. global rap sound because you see drill in Senegal, drill is in Australia, drill is, yeah. drill is in the UK. Drill What's started from Chicago. Song right now that's drill. <laughs> many, many every song. That okay. Let me even do a big one. But Kanye West dropped a song with Alicia Keys and Five Year Four and yeah. uh, New York. Yeah, that's, that's a drill beat. That's like one beat like that. Don't do, don't oh, you know what? Let me give it even even be easier example. Pop smoke. Yeah, little pop smoke is drill. Maybe welcome to the pod. I see. No, it's the same. Forget. It's, it's hard. It. It's hard. It's hard for you. <laughs> do some work out. Record. <laughs> I mean, like now. Nah, um, but but my point really is that I can either be an artist that either is it doesn't move forward. Yeah. Or I can move with the times. And in my own space, my own region, Afrobeats is big. It's huge. Yeah. And it's not difficult for me to rap on an Afrobeat track. Yeah, I love you, it. You, you, you make it seem effortless. So, so I don't know what why, why would I not tap into it? And why would I not find that part in the song where I'm like, oh, melody would be nice here. Sure. Why would I not do that? Because it's within my capability. I feel like when people start to now strain, maybe you can't really sing like that too, and you want to sing the whole song. Yeah, it's now not sounding awesome. sweet. Then your audience doesn't like that because it doesn't come off nice. So taste is important. I mean, I'm a tasteful guy. I think it makes it better yeah. to say that all the other rappers who can blend like you. It's a, it's, that means while they can do two, three things, you can do five, six things. Why not employ the entirety of your arsenal to make the music that you love to make? I mean, I'm here for the long, the long haul, you know, so I know that it's going to take everything. And that's where collaborations come in. It's important to, like, collaborating makes richer music. It takes the yeah. music further. So, like, also be smart about that, too. That's what I feel. And my, my career, collaboration has been a big... I know that. Speaking of collabs... The one with Ghost, hmm. one of my favorite songs. Double Homicide. How did that track come like? Double Homicide came about on a very frantic drive to the island to link up with Icon for studio. Icon doesn't like it when you come unprepared. Icon likes you to have verses. Don't write in my studio. You know, that kind of generator is on. That's diesel, bro. <laughs> so I realized I hadn't written anything to this beat that we had made the, the night before. And um, I started to write it in my head. So I had most of the bars that I dropped on the record in my head came into the studio. I'm like, Icon, I beg record before I forget. I recorded it. 
Little did I know that this man was not going to allow me to re-record it. So there's a lot of imprecision in the verse, but the verse is still, the cadence is so sweet. Is this about to be another double homicide? Everything you think is double, and, and then ghost. Well, just like this song, we need, we need, we need ghost on this. It's just not complete, and we don't want to put a hook. You know, even the last part of my verse, I say, um, "See this babe? Is she really going to spell?" That part was written. I wrote that part because I wanted Icon to rap it. I wrote it for Icon mm -hmm. to rap. He ended up backing out, saying he wasn't going to rap it. So I rapped it, and then Ghost comes on. Here's the beat. Takes it home, right <laughs> calmly to it, and obliterates it. Oh my goodness, his verse is so like technically precise. You know, one of the best performance moments I've had is Lady Poe Live 2018 when I performed Double yeah, Homicide with Ghost. Yeah, so that was that. such a that. moment. Yeah. And there's a point where we stop and, and everybody thinks it's over. Yeah. And then we go, is it about to be you know the double? Ah oh, no man, I, I can't wait to like bring that kind of moment back because there's not that many like shows that you can go to in Nige where there's a dope rap right. performance. Yeah. You know what I mean? A rap song being performed. So I'm realizing now that my own live show has to cater to so much because I have these big records now like Feeling and, and Running and stuff like that, but there's still space to cater to that and give that audience what they need. And I hope that we continue to grow that audience, bro, because as much as you hear rap heads disagreeing with this and saying rap is dead, there are not many still. They're not enough to make one song that's, no, that they yes. love do a million streams. Yeah, true. That's and they're still fighting us that we should, you know. <laughs> so I feel like that, there's a weird dynamic between the rap audience and, and the rap artists. I feel like rap artists have to be confident in who they are. I start to educate their fan base on like, this is my sound, this is my sound, this is how I do it, this is how I do it. And so everybody can know that, no, our community is alive and thriving. And the only way we can do it is doing more shows and doing more collaborations and bigger and bigger songs. Yeah, I think, I think collab is essential. Collabs is very essential, and, but I want to collab with guys who are hungry and ready, to, who are in the game. Not just because their name used to ring out, but like they're in the game, they're still pushing. Because the song is successful when both artists are pushing with all their might. So you know how do you mean? picture a feature on your head? Like say, Puji will be nice on this, Simi will be nice on this, like do you visualize that or it just comes to you? It's funny, I think that it comes through like different ways, different avenues. The Simi one, I'd, Simi and Fireboy are very similar because I always wanted to work with Simi. I always wanted to work with her. Like I found a DM from like, I remember what year, 2015 and 2014, where I DM'd her. The response is actually funny. I'm like, I would like to work with you. Uh, I think you're this, I think you're this, I'd like to work with you. She's like, okay, this part, I thank, she says thank you. This part is, she's like, I think you're dope too. She's like, but this part is not up to me, like working together. Then we, over time, her music came out, more of my music came out. I think she, she liked my music and stuff and she invited me to her studio and we made that song off of a conversation and, and, and that's also another thing. Simi is a writer yeah, and she's sure. a taskmaster yeah. in the studio. <laughs> I don't remember how many times I sang, but I don't really know you. That, I like, must have done like 15 <laughs> times. Again, you missed the note. Again, you know, and I, I like that because that let me know like to be an artist and even if you're a rap, you're expected to deliver on a record and be great. You know, um, uh, Fireboy once who I tweeted at him, telling him he's a dope writer. He's like, congratulations on Noe, because Noe was buzzing at that moment. And we had said, you know, we, we Fireboy's a real guy. Said it, it's like, he could tell the respect, mutual respect was there. We saw each other and we said we should work. Time didn't allow him to land. The minute it did, he came, came ready and we recorded three songs. The last song we recorded was Running. You know, and Running felt like, the right song to follow up feeling. Just the idea of I'm running on vibes. Yeah. You know, there's no time, there's no, there's something about, I like the way I'm feeling now. Don't, to me, I just felt like they were connected. So I didn't go with Afro Jigger, which was another song that was on Providence. I went with running as like the follow up song, you know, and uh, it's gone on to do really, really How's powerful it? things. Studio session with Remy Marlon. Not my guy. Wait, that's not my guy, but my guy. Wait, my guy. Yeah. Remy boy, um, I really like, if anybody captures big energies, Remy. Remy really has big energy. I've known. I've known that since he, um, like I remember when he, he, before he was unveiled, you know, he, and I, so I told him, like, you're going to be a superstar because he was so dynamic. He was so dynamic and he was so sure of what he wanted to do. And he was like, I know. But the way he said, I know, was not, I know now. It wasn't, it wasn't like cocky. It was more like, I'm, 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 I'm hungry for it, but I'm also aware of the responsibility on my shoulders. Like, I'm not coming here to play. I've never seen a 19 year old, how old was he, 17 or 18, anybody have that kind of like hunger in their eyes. At that age, I was indecisive. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, um, Rema hit me up one time, he's like, yo, I want to come up, I want to come to the studio and work, you know, tell me when. Yeah. 
So I, I, I did, while I was free, he came through and there's a Rema record that's going to be on my album, um, I hope, um, you know, when everything is said and done. And it's, it's just, a, it means so much to me, that song. And that's, Rema is the kind of person that um, he's going to really push this thing forward. He's a very, very special artist. In fact, I have to say, like, just in terms of what Maven is doing, in terms of finding talent and cultivating yes, what talent. Family, what are Maven family like? Talent pool is crazy. I mean, one thing is, first and foremost, the reason why there's a relationship with all of us is because, you know, you're seeing some of these artists for their launch. I remember when I signed in 2017 and I was one of the juniors on the label because I just, you know, signed and everything. And now I'm one of the ones that's been there the longest now. So it's just an interesting, like, transition. But you're seeing them as they're coming in before they're unveiled, and you're seeing their growth. You, they've given you, they've asked the questions, you've given the advice. You, bonding has already happened, and you want that person to pop. You know, you want the, because you know what it's like when it, it, the pop doesn't happen immediately. I've been through that. So, like, you immediately are family. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I feel like Jazzy has a fantastic eye for talent. That's for sure. And then the ANR team at Maven, they work hard. Bruh. I know. I heard the years I wish school that is someone for the next 10 years, someone they, for the next 5 years. They work very school. hard to cultivate. Like when the artist is in their academy stage, they're working so hard. Like they put a lot of themselves, you know what I'm saying? So um, big shout out to them. The, the, Maven is, everybody says me, Maven, they see Jazzy, see, but there's a, there's a, there are people there. You know what I mean? And like, um, I'm, I feel like I'm in the right place right now, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. New album anytime soon? I'm working. I'm working on the new album. Um, I, I was hoping it would be ready for this year. I, the, I knew it was not going to be ready for this year, last year in December. Because feeling, not even just feeling, feeling running and Providence put me in a place I'd never been before. But it was amazing. I'd never been on the road like that before. I mean, I'd been, you know, it might have happened for No You if not for COVID. To be honest, because no, you no, yeah, you was, was no, yeah, no, it was all over. It's but well, annoying. yeah, that, that, next song. I did not know that I could make a song that. Anyways, <laughs> that's, that's the, yeah, that's the hit single. yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's hit single, man. so I mean, like, I'd never been on the road that much before, and so away from the studio, you know, and so um, it was a new experience for me. Now with big energy, I knew we were dropping the record, so I've told my team we got to stay in the studio. Because music, because I'm looking at these other guys, the big three, the big four, big five. How are they making music and still being as booked and busy as they are? And it's like there's a way, and we have to hack it, you know. So I knew last year the album would come out this year, because I'm the kind of person that life has to happen, and I have to sit down and say, okay, this is the idea for the song. Okay, let me go and write it. Let me go and make yeah, it. I was going to ask this: How do you decide what to talk about? How do you decide? How do you decide what to talk about and what not to talk about so you're not redundant? The things keep happening, you know, the things I need to talk about as I'm in the situation. They will present it, themselves. It, they do me. Like, I remember there's a particular song I'm working on, and it was because of how I was detained by police and taken to the police station. I was like, okay, this, this I know, I called Emmanuel, I'm like, yo, book the session. Book the, good book, I can't swear on that, I might not swear. What would you, you know? Book the fucking session. These guys, what you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I have to record. What actually happened? What was that? It's just police had helped me on there. yeah, they helped me on Third Main Land. It was just shortly after NSARS, you know, that kind of thing. Five or six of them out there trying to drag me out, tear my my clothes and everything like that. Put me in a bus. There's one girl they it was in fact the whole record sound bites from the rec from the episode I, on, on the song, you know. So I was like, I have to go to the studio and do this thing. You know, so I've laid I've not written the whole verse, but the hook is there. So so, you know, these things, you have to talk about them. And then I feel like an album should reveal, an album should always reveal new insights, new things that are happening in the artist's life. Like, you need to hear my project and be able to know a little bit more about me. That's, that's, that's the idea. Do you know what I'm saying? So I knew last year was not going to drop. I just knew. I just knew that. Making that yeah. Making you just for this. <laughs> Maybe. I met, two, I met two cool guys. One of them likes Last of Us too. You know exactly. You guys are the greatest video uh, games. Yo, thank you. It's one of the best video games I ever played. That and God, God of War. Because you know I like God of War. The relationship between the father, the father and the son. And the son. How it develops. Same thing with uh, uh, Last of Us. You know what? Let, let's really get into it. Let me tell you. So I don't care if two days you listen. <laughs> I, I don't so know I, went back, I went back to play Last of Us 1 again. Yes. So here's something I don't know if we noticed the first time. Yeah. The story, yes. the cutscenes, the cinematics is yeah. what tells you the story. Yes. But apparently, 
even the design of the games. You know when you're playing, the first one you're playing as Joel. Yes. Ellie is an NPC, yes, right? Yes, so yes. After their first quarrel, yes. where she saves him with a gun, yes. he scolds her. Yes. Now you, the gamer, yeah. you start to notice that her body language yes. while you're walking around starts to change. Of course. You can now tell when she's pissed off yes. and all of that. And then when they mend, when they now make up, and he now trusts her with a weapon, her combat attitude now changes. She now attacks more, curses more, shouts more. So, uh, so yes, the bonding, yes, played it, so played the, it, played the it. experience yeah. is not just in the story. It's in your experience. You that's just sitting holding because the guy. Line. See, look, when I got to the you end, you know how we got to this last of us. Oh, okay. How okay, okay, the reason is because the Hennessy Cipher, the yeah. Hennessy Cipher, <laughs> twenty twenty one. Lad, when Ladipo is in a full boot, so he's rapping. The, the one line I remember before Last of Us says something about raising Lazarus again, and mm. so he follows the rhyme scheme and says he's just there with his babe playing Last of Us again, and so he's stuck in my head and then now as we came even before we set up i already yeah, asked him which really of them and so that's why we bonded <laughs> yeah. on the greatest game because at the, i don't want to give the, i don't want to spoil the game for people who are going to watch but what happens at the end you know obviously joe has to make a decision i already made that decision like this is not going to happen to ellie yes. do you know what i'm saying because i delhi was my that's exactly. my my little you, sister you, at that you, point aside from the writing of the, the you're also involved yeah that show is going to be great. Let me apply that to music. It's like, that's what you get from great writing. And I think one of the things that makes um, African music and Nigerian music so important in the space right now in the world, you cannot, you cannot replicate our melodies. Nobody can. They need to come here for those melodies. So our melodies are really like attractive to people. I feel though that another layer that is developed slowly is the lyricism is, is growing. People are saying something now. Yeah, the writers now. Because Afrobeats could be as lazy as it needed to be. Yeah. Something Bombay. Something will enter a bomb bomb. And which is cool because the melody is catchy enough to hold the entire song and that can repeat it four or five times. But now certain artists the expressions are coming out. They are coming out. The lamba is coming out. The words are coming out. You know, more it's getting more lyrical, and so to me, I look at I look at the you know the fires, the fire boys, the Omalays, the Bujus. They're they're really going at it, you know, and um and even the guys who like someone like Victoni, who I think is really dope, is somebody. How I heard of Victoni was he did a, one of my covers to one of my songs. I think it was Let Me Know, and there's another thing I dropped LOTR one freestyle, and I think Victoni did something very much inspired by that. And he's a lyricist; he can rap. Now he has a great voice. Why should he not deploy it and you know push in an Afrobeat direction? Because it's not as if you can you should be one or the other, right? But because he's such a sensible writer and smart writer, it makes his music, Afrobeat music, richer because his lines are mad. His lines are connecting. He's not going easy on himself. So even if the melody is sweet. He's going to write some lyrics. And I think that that's important for the whole space and people coming after it. Like, I say something. I always tell these new guys that write us first. Say so something. Yeah, Fireboy, yeah. Buju. Say Soul something. Guys, when, I heard, when I heard Noji's Mona Lisa, aside from the sound being so sweet, it was full of expression. Like, Yo, he right? said, he said what do you say about the, the poison? Your lips taste like poison. Yeah, your lips like poison. Noji is a writer. So, so I'm saying writer. these things are so important because like our, our, our careers must last long. And we're not just to making the song of the moment. We're making songs for decades, and we might make songs for movies and do yeah. this, that, and the third. And I feel like the power in the expression is not just the melodies, it's also the words. They're very philosophical yeah. about <laughs> Bro. I feel like yeah, there was, like you there that was such a like... thing like a rap school. <laughs> you should teach. As and, as teach. And it's not even rap you're teaching, it's just the philosophy of the music and it, Naman, you music. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> said, uh, Naman. I love that phrase, Naman, you be you, Naman. You know, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm, I feel fortunate to be doing what I do. I'm the only person in my family has ever tried this kind of thing. And of course, it took a whole lot of <laughs> doing for them to even accept it. So to, for even your own family to feel proud that yeah. this is how you're doing it, this is what you're doing and how you're doing it, that's, that's, that's validation enough. But then now the, the greater audience in Nigeria is starting to say, yeah. oh, I know that this guy. guy yes. That guy is like, that guy is dope. That, that to me is like, okay, we're breaking ground. That was the good at Chicken Republic that day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you would have still blown it that way, so, but let's give them endorsement. Shout out Chicken Republic. Yeah. You, should, you should give us an endorsement. Shout out Chicken Republic for real. That was the yeah. meeting point, man. And that's it, guys. We don't know what to be calling him in 2024, but right now, he's Mr. Big Mr. Big Energy. Right now. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you for coming, brother. You know, it's special, but you knew that. Thank you guys so much.